for uniformly accelerated motion, what we mean by uniform, we mean the same. In other words, we mean that the acceleration is going to be constant in these cases, okay? That's going to be really important. Constant acceleration. How about this cute little dog? Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so let's do some directions and conventions. And you don't have to use these, but I personally like to use these. It, it keeps my world a lot simpler when I'm using these. So here's a little trick for you, at least. So if things go up or right, I like to use what we do in math. In math, you know, if that, something goes up or right, then we tend to uh, write it with a positive. So I'm going to just write that down. So up or right, I use a positive. And if it's down, however, or left, you know, like we do in math, so for example, down or left, I'm going to say negative. That's going to be a little trick here for you. And this is especially useful for 2D, so when we do projectile motion as well. So what do we mean by uniform acceleration? Like I said, it's constant. The acceleration doesn't change. So that's a key piece of information here that we needed to know, sure. Um, but what do we do if it's not accelerating? That's a useful thing, right? So what then? So if it's not accelerating, what if it's at a, a constant speed? If it's at a constant speed, remember acceleration is a change in uh, velocity normally. If it's not accelerating, well that means, you know, of course, a is zero. And remember that a is just equal to a delta v over delta t. So that means that this here then, you know, there must not be a change in velocity. Fine. But then what do we actually do with this? A really useful thing you can do then is say, ah, well then let's actually just use this equation here for a speed, which is just that it's just equal to the distance over time. So if something is not accelerating, this is, I think, a really easy trick for you, okay? Is, is, and this is quite common. There'll be a lot of questions on exams that are something like this relating to like, if something's not accelerating, oh, then it's dead easy. Just do distance over time. But if it is accelerating, then the speed is changing. So then you have to use something else. So we have four equations for uniform accelerated motion. And this is good because these are actually in your data booklet. So I put them in green here. So let's just define all the variables first. We've got S is displacement. We're going to say U is the initial velocity. V is the final velocity. Remember, it could be speed as well. A is acceleration and T is time. Let's remind ourselves what are the units again. This is in meters. This is in uh, meters per second. I'm not going to put the uh, vector symbols on top of these. It's fine. This is in meters per second because it's a velocity as well, or speed. We've got acceleration. Remember, that's in meters per second squared. And then we've got time, which is in seconds. Okay, well, what are these equations then? You don't have to memorize them. They're given, but they go like this over here. So S, for example, equals U plus V over 2 times T. That's the first one. So the next one goes V equals U plus AT. Next one after that actually goes uh, S equals UT plus half AT squared. The last one goes V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And again, you don't have to memorize these. These are in your data booklet, so hooray for that. But they're extremely important. So make sure you know how to use these, and make sure you know when to use these. Now here's a tip for your exams. Uh, when you're solving these kind of questions, so when there is uniformly accelerated motion, so when the acceleration is constant, which we can assume in most cases, uh, well then, first of all, I like to remember you know, these tricks, right? Weren't we just talking about this? That remember if it goes up or right, I use a positive. If it goes down or left, I use a negative. That's important. I also like to use this uh, symbol right here that this right here is like what I want because I put a star by that. So that's usually what I do at least when I'm writing what we call SUVAT in a second. I'll explain that, what I mean. What I want and a question mark is something where I, I don't know and I actually don't care. Okay, so don't know, don't care. Uh, that's important because sometimes you're trying to avoid a variable. So what I do then is once I sort of use this idea here, I write down S-U-V-A-T. See, that's why all those are there. So I just write down like in a table. So I'll usually go like, you know, S, then U, then V, then A, then T. I make sure to convert units, by the way. You got to make sure all the units are correct. You know, so if you need to do any unit conversion, do it before you throw it into here, positives or negatives. Then I look in the data booklet and say, hey, wait, hey, is there an equation that has what I want, that avoids what I don't know, don't care? If so, I write it down, away I go, and I solve it. 
So let's do an example. Here you're driving in your car with an initial velocity of 21 meters per second, and you slam on the brakes. What does that mean? Well, that means you actually, you know, put your foot on the acceler on the brake pedal. And what that means is, of course, you slow down. So we're going to say you decelerate at 3.2 meters per second squared. And the question is, how long does it take for your car to stop? So what are we asking here? Let's maybe be careful about the variables here. So what are we looking for? How long does it take? That's T. That's what I want. Okay, I want to know T. Now I decelerate. Ooh, I know acceleration here. And I know initial velocity. Oh, that must be U. If you stop, what does that mean? That means that V equals 0. That's the final speed. It's going to be 0. And this acceleration is going to be 3.2. So what I'm first going to do is write down just SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T. I'm going to do a little table right here and be really careful with it. And I'm only going to put in values that have the right units. So S, the distance you travel. Do I know the distance that you travel? I actually don't. I don't know, and I actually don't care. I hope I don't need it. U, do I know the initial speed? Yeah. Let's assume it goes to the right, let's just say. So let's assume we're moving to the right. So that means it must be 21 meters per second. The final speed, V, is going to be 0. Now the acceleration, what do I put in here? Do I just put in 3.2? Be very careful. What that means then, if I put in a 3.2, that means you accelerate. That means you pressed on the gas pedal. We don't want that. So how do I deal with decelerating? I'm accelerating to the left. You know, so that's what I'm going to, in this case here, put a negative 3.2. This, this is the important part. And t is what I want. So do I have an equation? So look at your data booklet now. Look back at the equations we just wrote down. Do we have an equation that has t that doesn't have s? Yeah, there is one actually. It's just v equals u plus a t. Sometimes, by the way, there's multiple equations you can use, okay? But I'm just, I'm lazy. I just try to use the easiest one I can find. That's the simplest looking one to me. So let's deal with it then. What am I finding? I'm finding t, okay? And remember, I know that v is 0, so that's actually nice. So that's a 0. Well, if I want t then by itself, what is it? It's going to be minus u, because I move this u over. I'm going to divide by a, and that will be equal to t. Okay, so t is going to be minus u over a. So that means t will be, let's see now, it's going to be minus uh, u, which is 21. So minus 21, that's just the way the math worked out. Divide that by the acceleration, which was negative. And thank goodness, look, a negative divide by negative will give you a positive. Hooray, time will be positive. That's good. <laughs> it needs to be. Well, then I need my calculator. So I'm going to open up a trusty calculator here, and let's actually go ahead and solve it. So I need to do minus 21 over minus 32. So I'll make a nice pretty thing right here. I'll go minus 21 over minus 3.2. And I say go. And I get 6.5625, 6, uh, 6 so I'll write that down. So that means it equals... 6.5625, probably with some dot, dot, dots. Now it's important to consider the significant figures here. So they've given me two significant figures here and two here, so my answer should have two. So that means I should say 6.6 .6 is what I should say. And remember the units, it's going to be seconds. So there we go. So that's going to be my time to stop. It'll take me 6.6 .6 seconds to stop if I was going 21 meters per second. By the way, that's pretty fast. It'll take me 6.6 .6 seconds to stop. There we go. Okay, let's do one more example. Now, I was inspired by this. If you look down at this, I think it's a law of conservation quiz. A physics student is dropped. Don't ask why or you're next. And I actually <laughs> looked up the rest of the question. So it was uh, from 4.6 meters per second. That was your final speed, sorry. And then from what, from what height did they fall? So I decided, let's actually do this as a real question. So a physics student is dropped initially from rest. And their final speed is 4.6 meters per second. That means that's the speed like when they hit the ground, assuming. From what height above the ground did they fall? So if I'm going to do a diagram, for example, then it would be something like, you know, this right here. So maybe this is the ground. And this is a little person right here. So I don't know why they were dropped. Sounds kind of mean, but there we go. And there's an, a height here of, well, we're trying to find it. Okay, so we're trying to find this. A height. We know they're initially at rest here, and we know that their final speed then is going to be 4.6. And that's going to be down, keep in mind. So let's write down what we know here. So we do know, well, let's actually write down S, U, and V, and A, and T. Let's actually write all these down to see what to do here. So let's consider what we know, what we don't know, what we want.
So S, the displacement. Do I know that? I don't. In fact, that's what I want to find. So I'm going to put a star by that. U, do I know the initial speed? I do. Initially from rest means speed must be zero initially. That's U. V is this final speed. It's 4.6, but keep in mind, if I want to be really careful, now not everybody is this careful, but I really like to be careful here. What's my speed? Technically, aren't I going down? If I'm going down, what am I going to say? I'm going to say negative here for negative 4.6. What's the acceleration? The acceleration due to gravity on Earth, well, we usually use negative 9.81. A uh, data book that says use negative 9.8, but it's okay. So negative 9.81, and time, do I know that? I don't. I actually don't care. So I hope I don't need it. So let's keep going then. Do I, do I know an equation then that has S that doesn't have T in it? Yeah, there's actually one. Can you take a look in your data book? But it's actually V squared equals U squared plus 2A. S. No T needed. Ha. Ah. So let me just deal with this one here. So U is gone. That's great. Uh, what do I have for S here? If I want to get S, well, I got to divide. I got to divide by 2 and A. So I'm going to say then S equals V squared uh, divided by 2A. That's what happens when I do all the algebra here. So let's deal with this carefully. So that means it's going to be V squared. So it's going to be, uh, well, negative 4.6 squared, all that divided by, let's see, 2 times negative 9.81. Now let's keep in mind what's going to happen here. A negative squared is going to give me a positive. If I divide this by this negative number, I'm going to get a negative answer. Does that make sense? It should. Look, my displacement, when I land, I'm technically landing below where I started. So actually, I'm going to end up with a negative number. And that's okay. So let's deal with this. So here I'll get out my trusty calculator again, and I'll say, okay, I need a uh, pretty fraction here, and I'll say it's, uh, I mean, if I really want to, I can say it like this, negative 4.6. Ooh, actually, I'll put all this in brackets, and I'll say all that squared, all that divided by 2 times negative 9.81. I end up with negative 1.07849. So what does that mean? Well, that means my displacement then, that's what this is, my displacement then. Um, I'm going to do it to, let's see, two significant figures here. So I'll say it's approximately equal to, uh, well, negative one point, and this right here will become a one, because this seven makes it round up. So this will become negative 1.1 meters. Now, let's put it back into what they said. So from what height did they fall? I can say they fell from a height of, you know, 1.1 meters. Okay, and that's because over here, this left thing here, that was the displacement technically. But they didn't ask for the displacement. They asked, you know, from what height did it fall? So it suffices, I think. It's a good idea to just write it like this and say, all right, well, then the height is 1.1 meters. There we go.